so today I'm like really excited. I don't know if you saw our post earlier, um, but we have a new program and it kind of, you know, everything kind of builds out of me um, and my experiences. And so what I was finding is, and maybe this is you, when you guys go through a breakthrough, do you find like your, um, just in like a pile of shit for like a couple of days, like your mind is unraveling, your body, it, your energy is taking a dip, or you're moody, or you're anxious, or you're riding the emotional roller coaster. Let me know if that's something, hi Susie, if that's something that you guys experience. Because when I go through a shift or a clearing or a healing, whatever you want to call it, or a breakthrough, I know for me that you, yes, Michelle's like, yes, okay. So I know for me that I run into specific things and a lot of it has to do with resistance and a, and a fear of letting go, right? Which kind of led to my other post earlier today or yesterday actually, which is about, you know, um, holding on and not letting go. Um, what did she, I can't even remember what my soul said is like, um, stabbing yourself with knives because you're afraid if the other, the other side doesn't have any band-aids for you. Right. Which really got me thinking like, oh my God, like, think about that. Like we sit in the suffering and the pain because we're unsure of what's waiting for us on the other side. Right. And usually we know in our heads it's gonna be great, you know, we know it's gonna be awesome, but yet there's still that kind of energy or um, um, healing that requires us to let go or um, resolve or just be, just move through, right? And a lot of us, we don't wanna move through any of that. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people that we don't wanna move through it because that's like, you know, a snot fest, right? It's like everything, like all of the orises of your face are just leaking and it's sadness everywhere. Sometimes it's like crazy anxiety, right? And what I call this is, it's kind of like a breakthrough method. And Michelle's like, I'm just coming through this right now. Yeah. And you know, while I was going through this, I was in this really deep, heavy energy going, there's got to be a better way. Universe, God, source, creator, whatever. There's got to be a better way. How can we move through this with a little bit more grace or a little bit more ease and definitely a little bit more balance? And then I got this download. I wrote it all down. It's like this pie chart, but my printer wasn't working. And I got this like five-step process of how to up-level with your soul. Because here's the thing, you guys, and this is going to sound insane. When we go through the up-level process, we think we're doing it by ourselves, right? We think like we're in this mind space of ourselves and we're going through this process and we're alone and, you know, we're asking our guides for help and blah, blah, blah. But what if, this is the question I pose, like what if we up-level with our soul? Like what if we did it together, right? What if we did it in a way that was different? What if we could actually burn down the house, if you will, for, a, you know, just example. Like, what if we can burn down the house without literally having to blow up our entire lives, right? What if we could burn down all of the belief systems and all of the past hurt and trauma and just set it on fire, but not in a way that really blows us up? What if we had actual um, ways in which we can move through that process with a little bit more grace? You know, what if we had a deeper connection with that soul, what I call the heart-soul connection, that heart-soul energy? What if there is a way in which we could literally more consciously go inward into this breakthrough on purpose, okay? Not by accident, not like, oh, Mercury's coming and he's gonna stir some shit up, more along the lines of, you know what? I'm tired of this shit and I'm tired of repeating the same old patterns over and over again and I am ready and willing to move through it consciously and then having the actual process and the steps to say, 
okay, we're going to do it now. I'm not going to wait for some astrological event so that I can have this massive breakthrough. I'm going to walk into it with full knowing that this is what I want to change. This is what I'm working on. And I'm going to do it with my soul as kind of like my coach, right? And I thought like, why aren't we doing this already? Like, why aren't we going through this process and being totally consciously aware of our patterns and our behaviors? And then like, really not just taking control of them because that's all mind space, right? But if we co-create with that heart soul connection, we can actually do it together, right? With the heart and with our soul. And just think about how much easier can processing a breakthrough be if you're like being led by the hand by your own inner being. That just kind of like blew my mind, right? Do you, do you get that feeling that I'm getting? Like, it's just like a, well, like, why aren't we doing this? Like, aha, why aren't we doing this? So we came up with this idea. And of course, I just went through it this whole entire week, right? Because I was just like up leveling so quickly. I was like, okay, well, well, that was really easy. Let's do another. Let's do another. I think I had like two breakthroughs, two days in a row and knocked myself on my ass the third day, which is what I needed to do the integration. But all of these pieces were making it so that it was such a smoother ride. I mean, I usually, I don't know about you or what your process is, but when I usually go into like a massive up level, it takes me down. I want to say like, my energy just plummets. My mental body is super activated. Um, the emotional body is activated. And I go into this like negative spiral. And that's when I was in this negative spiral. There's got to be a better way to do this. And that's when I came in and I was given a couple of processes to make it better. And not only does it make it better, the ride is so much smoother. I was just like, mind blown. So all I've been doing this week is putting this down on paper and trying to discuss the breakthrough. And so what it is that I've come to, to see is this pattern. And it's kind of like this, I don't know if you can see it. There's like this, there's like steps. It's crazy. There's like actual steps we go through when we have a breakthrough. And I'm going to tell you what they are. You tell me where you're at in this whole breakthrough process, right? So the first step of a breakthrough is to really identify what it is that you're wanting, what it is that you want to move out of and what it is you want to move into, right? And then to create a deeper heart soul connection in that process, right? So usually we like, we do our journals and it's like, I want 20K months and I want blah, 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 right? And we do it from this head space, right? We don't do it from this heart space. So it's kind of like, it feels or it felt like to me, like I was doing this on my own and I didn't have to do this on my own. I can do this with my soul. And so what I did is we created this kind of heart soul process to really dive in deep into that space and then kind of work together with my essence in order to be able to not only achieve the goals that I wanted, but to get information and feedback about it and what are the things that I needed to release in order to create it, right? Because sometimes we'll sit here and be like, oh, I want to create 20K months. Well, what's in your way? And we, and I don't know about you, but I would sit here and be like, well, I don't know. I mean, that like, that's the whole problem, right? It's like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm just like, I don't know, right? So when you're in this heart soul space and you're like really connected super deep, it's like boom, 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 boom. Things just start to pop up and you're like writing lists down and you're like looking at it going, oh my gosh, I didn't know half of those things were there, right? And it's not like you're making them up. It's like you're being fed them, right? Because your soul is your partner in all this. And she or he is telling you, hey, take a look at this. This is what is, is happening, what's going on, what's, what you're holding. So creating that, that process, that's step one, is creating that awareness, creating that heart-soul connection. 
And I know, listen, I know a lot of you people out there who do energy work and healing are like, I am so connected with my soul. I will bet you 90% of the time you are connected with your soul, but not in this way. This is like a whole different way of looking at things and, and having your soul come in as an active participant, not a bystander. Because I've been doing this stuff for 20 years. Let me tell you, this one blew my mind. It just blew my mind, okay? The second piece is breaking in. We call it breaking into your soul, right? And so it's, it is the process um, of the first, what I call the first signs of the breakthrough. Um, and let me know if you guys are watching, let me know what your signs, your breakthrough signs are. But the first signs that I've come up with through my experiences and with all my clients is number one, sometimes breakthroughs show up as body pain. Sometimes they show up as mental thoughts that are like on repeat. Sometimes they show up as really just high, low emotions, irritability, anger. And here's the one that like really like lit me up. Sometimes breakthroughs show up as technical difficulties. And I mean like your computer doesn't work or you posted something and it didn't show up or, you know, the light switch on whatever isn't working, like real technological difficulties. That is also a sign of a breakthrough. The other one is, and I've done this myself. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> this is how I found out. Okay. Emotions for sure. Michelle says emotions for sure. For me, like accidents, like bumping into things, falling off of things, even car accidents. So, you know, we don't really want to use that, but those types of accidents, Heather's like, yes to all of those. Okay, cool. So like, um, for me, like I knew I was having a breakthrough a couple of months ago when I was outside riding on my e-bike, having a great time. And I literally got pushed over by the wind. The wind pushed my bike into the curb. You guys probably remember this. I was going like, I don't know, 12 miles an hour on my e-bike and I tumbled over the front handlebars. And I was like, that is the craziest shit I've ever experienced. And then following that, like a week later, I had this massive breakthrough. Heather says, I hurt myself, stub my toe, trip, knock things over. Yeah. The other thing is um, um, breaking glass, dropping glasses, breaking plates, um, you know, just being clumsy all the time. Breakthrough. Heather's like, yes, we had class later that day, I think. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, so you're familiar with the signs. Susie's like, sometimes my ADHD acts up like a technical difficulty and I become agitated. Yeah, that can happen too. Or even the other way, it could be like you're so super laser focused that like you're so focused that by the time you get up from your computer, it's like, it feels like three days later and you're like so saturated with energy because you've just been flowing, flowing, flowing. That's what happens to me a lot too. Yeah. So you have these types of um, signs, signs that you, that you are going or in the process of a breakthrough. Gloria's like, snap my finger in a mousetrap. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> But yes, I mean, like, how fun is that is recognizing where you're at with it, which is really cool. So we call that breaking in, right? Breaking into that soul awareness of Michelle's like, my eyes get blurry too. Yeah, I get blurry eyes also. And that's just like a recalibration of the way of your perceptions, right? Your, your perceptions are shifting. So that's breaking in. And we go through these processes, right, of trying to come to the awareness of what it is that you do, how you do it, and um, you know, really how, how we perceive it as well. Um, the, the third step is what I call, this is <laughs> ironically, right, or maybe not so ironically, the breakdown, right, is where we're literally, this is what I call when you set the house on fire, when you're in that process of lighting it all up, to burn down and you set the house on fire. 
setting your house on fire is not a requirement. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you don't have to blow up your whole entire life. You don't have to blow up all of your relationships. You don't have to blow up anything in order to make a shift or up level into your next energy, into your next being, into your next whatever, right? That higher up leveling that you're moving into doesn't require blowing things up. When we set our house on fire, what we are doing is really unraveling and clearing the mental, emotional beliefs and patterns that were actually held in that metaphorical house. Yes, Michelle, the roof, the roof is on fire. We don't need no water. Let that motherfucker burn. Yes, exactly. We should play that song. Um, the funny thing, I mean, it's not even the funny thing, but here when we're standing out here and we're set the house on fire and we're setting it ablaze, right? And we're going through all of these um, mental and emotional experiences. This is what happens. The ego comes out of the house at whatever age, if you can imagine that, whatever age, and basically says, stop. Stop burning it down. And it gives you all of the reasons why you don't want to set this on fire. It gives you all the evidence, all of the proof that it's accumulated over the years based on your experiences as to why you shouldn't want to be burning this down. Yes, Michelle, it's like tries to be the firefighter. It wants to be safe. The house, even though it was dysfunctional, for a lot of us was a safety bed for a long, long time. And now you're lighting it on fire and that ego part of you is scared. We go into massive resistance and the problem with the breakdown is we tend to quit there. That's where the breakthrough stops. A lot of people do put the fire on the, ho on the hose, the fire hose on the house and stops the process. And that's where all of the, you know, later on down the road, you're in, you're in whatever session you're in and they're like, oh yeah, you need to, you know, go through and, and clear this out. And you're sitting there and you're like, well, no, no, wait a minute. I, I set that on fire like three months ago. Like that's, that should be gone. Why, why is it there? Like, why is that still there? Why am I healing this again over and over and over? Because you put the fire out, right? You have half your house still standing. And when half your house is still standing in your energy fields, it's just as good as still being there. Michelle says, shit, I've been there. I quit so many times. It, it, it's challenging. It is so challenging, which is why I developed this whole up level with soul process now because I've been there too. It's like there's too many half burned houses, right? There's too many times where we're just saying, you know, didn't I do this? Like how much money do I have to spend now to burn the other half of the house down? And then we light it up again and we put it out again. It, that becomes like the pattern, right? And so when we are in this process, which is the hardest part, right? How can we create that heart-soul connection where we can go into this place and be like, help me, help me burn the rest of this down. You know, help me keep my hands to myself. Help me not, you know, fire hose the rest of it. Help me move through it with that extra support, comfort, essence energy that we have already at our hand in our hands well in our hearts really right how can we access that how can we make your soul that connection an active participant in the process right and it's very simple we just have to ask but we have a job right so it's like we have to ask and then your soul will sit there and be like okay but I need you to do this. And that's where we get stuck because sometimes we don't want to, <laughs> right? Because we're stuck in that resistance. 
we're afraid of what's on the other side. We can't imagine or see what happens, what builds up after that house is burned to the ground. Right. If you if you're burning down a single family home, you know, you're afraid that oh, I'm going to get a shack instead. Well, the question really is, is what if. What if you get a oceanfront property instead? Right. But you're stabbing yourself and you're holding yourself back because you think you're going to get a shack. So you still stay in that pain and in that suffering, in that pattern, in those thoughts without even knowing, right? So we call that the breakdown. And that's usually in every process, whether you're a healer, you're a coach, you're doing it on your own, you're doing it with someone else. That is usually where people get off the boat. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> Spray this. Leave half the house. I got half of it. Half of it is good. Okay. Uh, Michelle says, wow, tears. I needed to hear that so much today. Oh, I'm so happy. This is helpful. It is. And, it, you know, this is why when I ask, you know, I've been there. Like, why? we got to do this better. How can we do this better? Not even how can we do this ourselves. How can we do this with soul? How can we do this together, right? We don't have to do it by ourselves. We have to do the work, but to know, to feel, to experience that that other part of you is literally right there guiding you through the whole process, cheering you on. That just like changes everything. It just flips everything on its head. Um, the lot, that's not even the last process, process number four or step four, I should say, which is what, um, Michelle is really talking about is commitment and self care. When you are burning down your house, you can literally feel it. If you are energetically sensitive, you will feel it for me when it's a very big pattern of behavior that I want to change, that I've been working at in my head over and over and over again, it literally feels like the pull literally feels like I'm losing my mind. Like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I evaluate everything. I sit and I look at everything. I get confused. I get anxiety, right? Because we're so familiar with the patterns that when they actually pull, we don't have a new reference point yet. We can't see the other side yet. So that creates a lot of anxiety. But what if, what if your soul already knew what was on the other side? What if if you were working together, she could transmit what is going, what you're going into next. Wouldn't that feel a little bit more calming? Wouldn't that be a little bit more soothing? Wouldn't it be okay to kind of lose your mind for a moment? Knowing, knowing that there's not a shack on the other side knowing that half your house isn't going to be standing, knowing that when you're through it, your soul has this beautiful place for you to be. For me, that just took my anxiety levels down like a million. And what that allowed me to do was to really be able to utilize things like your mantras, right? Like the what ifs, right? To be able to talk to, and if you will, coach my ego out of bringing out the hoses and, you know, sprinkling down the fire. It gives you this whole new sense of empowerment of, I set that on fire, I'm watching it burn, and it's gonna be fucking awesome awesome when it's done versus give me the hose do it now hurry up get the hose splash it down stop this right now 
but that's commitment. It's not only commitment to the practice, it's commitment to yourself. It's trust in yourself as an energy, as a soul. And it's repetitive, alarm keeps going off, repetitive patterning. During that time when everything is burning, you also want to make sure you are taking care of yourself. And I don't mean like, you know, go on, you know, I guess you could do, you know, go and have lunch, but I mean things like acupuncture, taking care of your body too, because when you're stressed, your body's stressed, massage, chiropractic, yoga, meditation, right? I know you've heard all of these things before, but I want you to look at it from a different perspective. I want you to look at it from, you know what? I'm letting my house burn. It's burning down. And you know what? My body is super uncomfortable with that. And she's aching and painting. So I'm going to do a salt bath. I'm going to do things to help my body calm down. Because if your body's screaming at you and you're creating more pain, it's very challenging to keep your mindset on focus to watch the house burn. Does that make sense? Self-care and just being able to recognize, here's the big thing, here's big self-care right here in this moment, is to be able to recognize that what you're experiencing, all of the emotion, all of the pain, all of the mental, all of the emotional stuff, is you up leveling, breaking through, setting that house on fire. Just that awareness while the house is on fire and your ego's coming out with the hose and she's scared or he's scared and you're just standing there watching it burn and having that awareness of, oh, she's really acting up. Yeah. Oh, all these old thoughts. Oh, pause. I'm going through a breakthrough. This is the breakthrough process. To be able to kind of look at your list, right, of and go, oh, I'm in the breakdown stage, right? To re-educate your brain, re-educate your ego into saying, no ego, we don't have to stop here. This is the stage we're in. We're breaking down. So we need to let this burn because on the other side of it, it's going to be awesome. And then we're going to break through. And that breakthrough is even deeper, deeper alignment and deeper commitment. Because after we break down, we get to break through. And when you do break through, that's when you're taking care of yourself. That's when things are remodeling on the inside in the upper dimensions. Oh, it's kind of like, okay, well, we've got to work this all around, you guys. Guys, hey, 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 hey. Susie had a breakthrough. Michelle had a breakthrough. Heather had a breakthrough, you guys. Glory had a breakthrough. We've got to recalibrate everything now. So when you go through that, inner, what we call the inner model, remodel, remodeling all the inner pieces, remodeling your grids, remodeling your energy fields, vibrating at a completely different attraction factor, right? Because your magnetic attraction is different now because that piece that was in your field is no longer there. That's the breakthrough where you start to integrate. But even as you're integrating and either, even as you're bringing things in and you're taking care of yourself, you still have to have that awareness of, I'm almost done. We're getting there. We're at the tail end of the breakthrough process. We're almost there. Right? Versus, right? Versus, I feel like shit, I'm dying. <laughs> right? Oh, 
what the hell is happening? I'm so tired. I can't do this anymore. Right? That was me. And then that would be like at the breakthrough stage. We still have to keep moving forward. Because even at the breakthrough stage, you may not go backwards. Right? But in that breakthrough stage, if you're still not committed to moving forward, guess what you do? You start the process of recreating another block moving forward. And you give that momentum. And then that takes up speed. And the next thing you know, you're going through the whole process again. The last piece, which probably should be the first piece, I haven't, I haven't really decided, is... How can we, for some, for people who are not familiar with, how do we communicate with soul? How do we create that heart soul connection that's so deep that I can actually receive clarity, guidance, and information? So I figured, why don't I just show you? <laughs> right? Why don't we just create an entire module about recoding to your soul's level energy? raising your frequency and then showing you how to do that so that when you're going through this process the second time and you're like having this hairy conniption so i might actually flip one and five modules now that i'm sitting here thinking about it i might flip them in the order what if you could just sit there and be like okay what's happening and like your soul turned around and be like, we're up leveling. Check your chart. <laughs> Where are you on the chart? And then be able to really completely understand your own process. Whether you create it intentionally or whether it happened unintentionally because of the astrological configurations, right? You will still have an understanding of your process and you will have an understanding of how to move through it without lighting your whole world up, without destroying relationships, without blowing up people, jobs, careers, anything, without blowing it up. Because you'll know how to move through it. And then at the end of it, you could just be like, hmm, you know what? Yeah. I am going to blow that up because that doesn't serve me now and I don't want it. But you're not in a place of reactivity where you're blowing it up from reaction. You're at this place of activity of being able to blow it up in a gentle, easy, graceful, polite way in some circumstances by knowing who you are in your power. Activating that magic of you. <laughs>